I'm Wayne Carey, and this is The Truth Hurts. Well, welcome back to The Truth Hurts, and uh, who would have thought we're back for Season 2, although there have been, or there has been, a major, major change. Actually, it's not as big as you. Yes, it is. It's it's a huge change because our beloved uh, Ant and Woolley, uh, Ant and Woolley, uh, I've, I've finally got his name right because he, and he's not here anymore. But he, uh, well, he's gone back to the other side. He was a. I'd like to thank Ant, like huge part of this show. He's a he's a he's a great man. But uh, he's gone and got himself another couple of jobs, and uh, he's well, he's. He's just far too busy, to be honest, to be working on a on a show like this. So I've gone out and I've I've gone a little bit more edgy. Um, I've gone with a man that, uh, well, as let's be honest, he's written a lot of stuff that has upset people and probably written stuff about me that's upset me as well. But um, I've gone and got the man himself, Tony Sheehan, who uh, so welcome, Tony, to the Truth Hurts. I think. Thank you, Wayne. There's no question that you'll uh, you'll add a. A different spin. Um, oh, I hope so. I we've known one another for a long time, and you, well, you'll bring out. Uh, you'll certainly, you'll certainly challenge me. Not that uh, Anton didn't, but you'll certainly uh, challenge me, and we can uh, get into some robust conversations about all sorts of things. We've got some really good guests lined up for the year. There's a lot of stuff going on. Um, concussion is the big uh, talking point. It's been a big summer. Um, well, it's been a huge summer, but I, I should probably thank Ayrton for the building blocks which he's created. He did a fantastic job through 2023 in the first 12 months with you. He was sensational. And now it's up to me to uh, take off where he left off. He's gone back to the mainstream media and collecting a yeah, paycheck from Channel 9. A, a little bit. Uh, I would have thought on this show it might be a little bit compromised for Ayrton to uh, not speak his mind, but... What time constraints or what I, I, I think it's a I, I think a little bit of everything. I think you know there's there's certain things, but he no he he massive part of this show and he's a very good mate of mine and I love him and it's sad but take him to the box we uh, we we're, we're, we're going to have a lot of fun. In and and we are. I'm looking uh, forward this. to it. Well, you and I have, have spent a lot of time um, together personally, and now we're probably back in the professional arena. So. We think they can both cohabitate. Uh, well, well, we hope so. So just, I don't want you sitting on the fence. I know that you don't. And, uh, <laughs> I've never been accused uh, of sitting no, on the I, fence, I, Doug. No, I don't. And you have upset some people, but so have I. So yeah, well, as have you. But you know what the other thing is? I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't upset yeah, a few people. Uh, true. And and it, I'll tell you what it has been, though. It's been a big summer. Massive summer. Massive summer. And so doing so many different things. And, you well, know, what have you been doing? Well... I've been out of the papers for starters. Oh, I'm not so sure about that. That's uh, that's that's the first thing. I've I've had a uh, had a uh, summer free of making the newspapers. Well, we know that is absolute rot. Why don't well, we? Why don't we absolute Ben, the, our producer extraordinaire over here? Why don't we have a listen to what happened uh, on Friday? <laughs> AFL Hall of Famer is dropping into the jungle. He's a premiership winner too. Yeah. But can he dodge a Python's loving embrace? I'm a celebrity. Starts March 24 on 10 and 10 play. Oh, duck. Well, on <laughs> on Friday. <laughs> well, everybody, everybody. Well, I forgot well, about. I forgot everybody, about. Everybody that. woke up to the 15 text messages. Have you spoken to Wayne? Have you spoken to Wayne? Is he going into the jungle? Who's the AFL legend? How, how is that? Like, and <laughs> I actually forgot about that. Um, because it's just such a non-story. And then it was written up that I was going into the... Ju- I am not going into any jungle. I'm not on any reality show. Categoric? Well, categoric. Have you spoken with the producers have not of I'm many, a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here? Many years ago, I spoke to um, the people. They didn't speak to me. They spoke to management at the time. And the answer was a quite, quite clear uh, no. And I, I don't know where this has come from. So clearly... and. The first time that I've seen or heard that clip, I saw the newspaper, yeah. but uh, I didn't hear that. So they've sort of made it sound like it could be me. There are plenty of people, by the way, that have in the Hall of Fame and done certain things. Yeah, well, Bucks did it. Fev did it. Uh, I think Brody Holland did it. There's been a few of Yeah, them. but I mean the way they explained it. Yes. Which I've only just heard. 
So you know well, that, they didn't that say could 272 make, game star. And no, they didn't. They didn't give those specifics. So how that got onto me, but also little things I like to talk about. You wouldn't know this, but I like to talk about things that have happened, little quirky things with, uh, with a family, and um, to spend a lot of family time uh, with the with the kids. And my eldest daughter, who by the way starts college today, so we did a, we did a show. To we did a life. show that. Um, we did a show during the year that said she was the first Carrie to actually oh, uh, finish year, <laughs> finish <laughs> year school. twelve. So she's going to college, uni. Um, she's also born on the same day as me. Yes, she has the same birthday, which is why I never forget your birthday. Well, I probably have gotten <laughs> yours, but not hers. She also went and got a piece, which uh, was very interesting well, because tell her she, how she went. Tell us well, how she, she failed. Went. She failed the first time. So she's going to be a university happy. scholar, but she not, failed her driving not, not, license. Not happy. Uh, well, she wasn't happy. No one was happy because it was, well, how is she going to get to school? Um, of not school, uni. University. And then I had to – then the next booking wasn't for three or four months or three months or something here in Melbourne. So um, – Rang around and finally got her in at Melton. So I had to get up. Her old man couldn't pull any I strings? I had to uh, get up. No, well, you don't pull any strings anymore. You just go through the right avenues and you, you get the job done. And oh, okay. So got her another driving test down at Melton. So drove her down there and the whole way down there had to be giving her a pep talk about overthinking and, you know, not don't worry about, you know, if you fail, just do, concentrate and... Once again, just like when she uh, when she actually, you know, got a diploma or whatever you call it, a high school high school certificate. <laughs> How old were you <laughs> when she graduated? <laughs> um, I was all teary. Well, standing there listening to the lady that took it for the test, and the way it started off, well, you should have checked that mirror, should have checked that mirror, and then eventually hearing the the news that she actually got a a, a piece, um, you know, nearly welled up and. Really? Oh yeah, but they're little they're little things, and I was glad. I was actually glad that I was the one that you know took it down there to to actually see that moment. What was Ella's mum so there as well to enjoy the spoils? No, she wasn't there for that. So that's one. That's one. By the way, she's a fair way in front. So <laughs> let's <laughs> let's not talk about that. The other the other way is the other thing that I did was uh, I went over to Bali. So had a had a trip. Um, uh, let's say given to me to go over there, so it was uh, took the family over. Any shout stayed outs at to a, former any Essendon players? No, and stayed at uh, friends of uh, Jess's that have this villa called. Uh, it's actually I wrote it down because it's a little bit tricky. Casa, Casa, Infinito. It's called. It's in Changu. Wow, what a what a villa it was is this a freebie that we've got to promote throughout the year no 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 it's not and this isn't a cash for comment or anything but that's we stayed in their villa and it was it was it was brilliant like just fantastic kids everywhere they they had their they had their kids kids everything else but what i want to ask you and and this is what i want to ask uh, the people that you know, tune into the podcast well, because we, we do make, this. We do this often, Duncan, and that is. I want to ask: Is it yes that'll all be given out? Is it right that you get on a motorbike with your partner Jess and your four-year-old son when you're in Bali? Were you wearing helmets? They were. Okay. Is this but, a first-time ride? A long time. They were wearing helmets now. And this is a serious conversation because yes. people there will be people out there that say, "Oh, that that is absolutely disgusting," and you know you shouldn't do that. You've taken your your son into your life and Jess and you know everything else. And if you've got a motorbike license, so you as we know over there, you you can get a motorbike um, and you can get on or it a and scooter. ride it. And that's well, it's sco- well, that's what it was. Sorry, it's a scooter. <laughs> wasn't exactly a, a Harley or anything like that. It was a, it was a scooter, but. You see, it is that busy over there at the moment. If you to get a car from point A to point B over a two or three kilometre period, it, it, you were in that. You will be in that car for an hour and a half, two hours. Did you think about this it, when you hired one? the scooter? Absolutely, I did. And I mean, even even me getting on the scooter by myself, you 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 literally are now. I would prefer, I guess. 
the decision that I made was to we get on the back of scooters of the of the the drivers that over there that you know like taxi drivers. Um, there is a name for them. I'll think of it in a second. But they they drive you. They they oh, ride, like a rickshaw. They or ride you around. Yeah, and you obviously put a helmet on and all that sort of stuff. But I I guess if it's my son and and you know your your partner then then you're responsible for them. So it was my decision that I I rode the bike. Now when you're over there, you see you see eight ten year old kids riding their own bikes. Mm. The local local kids clearly more more experience on the bike, they know, and there are no rules. And I, I just wonder how many people out there think that that is, is totally wrong. And I, and I must say, by the way, no incident, no one got hurt. So it is dangerous, and, but it wasn't dangerous. Well, no, well, there's, there's danger. There are, there's seriously danger all around. And, and every time I got to uh, point A, um, I, almost, I almost said a little, oh, you know what, got through that without incident because it's not exactly what you do it's what someone else does yeah, of course. and it's not the lo- and it's not the locals either it's it's you know like other people like me that are over there that are riding a bike that you know maybe not that good on a bike or not as not as sensible or or who knows so it was seriously every time i got somewhere it was a little you know thank you that i i got there and but it, in saying all of that great time sun um you know, a lot of stuff with the kids and, you know, everyone had a, had a great time. But it is, a, it is a very serious topic, I reckon. Well, as you know. Bali, because, well, there, there are just so many Aussies over there. Yeah. That are... Amongst other um, countries. Oh, yeah, of course. But more Aussies than other countries. Yeah. And, and it is a great spot to holiday to and, and absolutely love it. But it was just... It's, it's something that's played on my mind and, and it's a conversation that I've had with a lot of friends afterwards and some of them have said... You are a, an idiot for actually, you know, d- doing that. How did that make um, you feel? Um, an element of guilt, saying, "Oh, ma- imagine if something did happen." Mm. Um, by the way, we're not we're not breaking any barley laws or or anything like that. We, everything was legit. Although I didn't have a helmet on, so I did get I did I did get grabbed on the arm one day by, by one of the uh, officers at one of the sort of. Well, they don't have too many traffic lights over there, but and just said so they pull you over and you get a quick fine and you move on. But there is was, this a police officer? Yeah, but there was enough traffic for me to get away, so I just sort of scooted oh. through the traffic. You invaded the <laughs> authorities, I Wayne. The, I did the rudder. Oh, well, that, does that surprise you? But with <laughs> Jess and Carter on the back. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, Carter's in front. The story's getting better. Carter's better. in front. <laughs> Jess is on the back. But anyway, I got away. Look, I'm glad everybody is uh, in safe hands. I'm glad you looked after your uh, your partner and your son. But I actually had my own incident. I was actually at a uh, wedding in Bali some four to five years ago with a mutual friend of ours. And I thought I'd go and, as you said, point A to point B on a motorbike is a far better challenge than getting your car or a taxi or whatever it is. So I, in my wisdom, thought that I would ride the scooter between a power pole and some brickwork. And Which is what it is over there. That's everything. So you go up. For those who don't know who've been to Bali, when there's big traffic jam, um, you can either go up the outside, which you've got oncoming traffic. Now they they know what they're doing over there. So there's, if I haven't seen too many head-ons, yeah. But what a lot of people do, especially when the traffic is at a standstill, that you go up. Basically, you go up onto the gutter. Or yeah. you go up on the inside and there's generally a bit of room. So yes. that's what you're talking well, about. Well, that's what I attempted to do and yep. uh, found myself jammed in between the power pole and the brickwork. And as you know, you're usually wearing Havana thongs or things that aren't quite that supportive of your feet. And I've grazed my entire foot. I thought, oh, that, that stings a bit. So anyway, I ploughed on, gave the scooter back, went back to the hotel and decidedly... I. I thought in my wisdom I would put my left foot, which was grazed and bloody, into the pool. Oh. Now, I had a wedding that afternoon. <laughs> that didn't go down too well. You're a nitwit. Why would you put your foot into a pool? Well, because well, there's I, that many, there's I wasn't that many thinking. germs. I, put it in the ocean, no problem. I wasn't thinking. So anyway, we ended up getting a plane home. So it all, it all just got infected. And, and yes, well, I'm about to uh, uh, develop the story. Anyway, we got, back to, we got back to Melbourne and my foot was like a balloon, literally. So I've rung our mate Doc Larkins and 
He said, uh, Tony, where have you been? I said, Bali. He said, oh, send me a photo. And he said, you should go to Alfred Hospital right now. So I walked in and I said to the lady at the desk, lovely lady, and she said, uh, where have you been? I said, Bali. She says, what's wrong? And I showed her my foot and she put me straight into this area where no one else was allowed to be. And then it dawned on me the seriousness of actually what I had done. So I was in hospital for five or six days with an infected foot. So, if, well, serve yourself right for putting it in the pool, for starters. Well, I did think afterwards that it was probably is, a little bit silly. Well, there you go. So th- so anyway, those out there that think that I was a, a, an absolute idiot, I already think that I am an idiot for doing it. Um, no no issues, no one got hurt, but it, it, is a, it is a topic and it is something that happens over there and you see people everywhere doing the same thing. And I, I don't know, I don't know. Is there, Would you like to change something be, about it though? No, no, well I can't. But what, what am I going to change? Well, it all depends on how vocal you are on this topic. Well, no, I, I told you, I, went, I also went to a Rodeo. Yeah, I did hear about this. Yes. Was this the went one in Bundalong? Up at Bundalong. Bundal- there's, there's yeah. A, yeah, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of talk. It was uh, Australia Day weekend. Um, we won't go into Australia Day uh, weekend. That's a whole new. That's a whole new topic, <laughs> um, and a political topic at about uh, Australia Day. But Ben Ben came up and and uh, took a little bit of vision, not as much vision as what uh, he should have. He should have. Uh, he should have got. Don't stitch him but there was up, a lot of a lot of thing, and and saw a an well, I won't say an acquaintance. John Stevens was uh, singing up oh, there from Noiseworks. From Noiseworks, Works. Well, Eloise Pratt's partner. A little bit of room. Uh, I I don't know whether it's public or not. I don't know whether I can say, but Noiseworks might be coming back. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, is this breaking news? Maybe you know what I'd I'd had a couple. So I'm <laughs> <laughs> had he I had I'd had a cut. No, he was he was good. He had to sing. So I'd, I'd had a couple, but I don't know whether I heard that Noise Works is coming back together. Well, you heard it here first on the and, truth. And, hurts. and yeah, so uh, we did that. The other thing that has happened is Tay Tay, obviously in town. Uh, hang on, let's know. You've missed a distinctive part of this talk about the rodeo. Mm. Did you run into anybody up there? Um. No, what do you yes, mean? Yes, you did. Who? Did you run into some ex-teammates up in uh, Bundalong? Actually, I ran into a lot of ex... I, uh, very... <laughs> very... <laughs> no, I did. I saw um, uh, Arch and Steve over there. Yes. Um, ran, in, uh, ran into those guys, said g'day. Uh, Brett Scholl was there and his sister. Um, so, re- actually ran into heaps of people. A lot of people were up there to watch John Stephen sing. And by the way, he was very good. Yeah, so how did it go with Arch and Steve-O? Well, Fine. Catch up with Arch. Whenever Arch and I see one another, we we have a beer. Yeah, well, but we look, it's not my than, fascination. We more it than is have the one world beer. Fascination. Yeah, no. Well, it's not a world fascination, but no. I we went up and said g'day, and um, they had their country gear on, and yeah. I had my well, RMs on. Your had, RMs, did I you? I had my RMs. <laughs> well, you got to wear your RMs. Oh, make, of course, you make do, out, yes. make out. You're a country boy, but then there was. Hang and, on, did you talk to Steve O? Yeah, no, he said g'day. Yeah, how was it? Fine. No frost. No. Well, no, no. But we didn't. We didn't stand around and you know do any boot scooting together or <laughs> or anything. Well, but you did say to me that um, you'd walked over with uh, no, four year old Carter. And I had Carter now five. Five. Um, so he had his birthday uh, not all that long ago. So he's yeah. Yeah. One of the all the North fans would love to see that you and Steve. Yes. Yeah, so so we went over. The other big thing, and I'll put a photo. Carter's chosen his team. Oh yes, he's chosen, and it's gotten and nothing to do with me. He has chosen the Kangaroos. Really? Yep. North Melbourne is his team. So purely based on colour? Uh, no, I I think it was because he had plenty of people, you know, trying to f- push him into other teams. Um, like what Carlton, uh, Geelong, and, and yeah, so Jess and everyone's like trying to push him to Geelong and um, Rose. It was just. You know what it was? I think it's the tattoo I've got on my bum that he called a rabbit, right? Really? And the reason why he calls it a rabbit now is because it's a little more floppy than what the... <laughs> so, so, when I... Ex- Do you reckon we can get a photo up of that? When I, <laughs> when I explained to him that that's a kangaroo, and, yes. he, and you know, and he, and he knows that daddy played footy, but he, not to any extreme. I don't... So, when I explained to him that's kangaroos, daddy played for the kangaroos. So, for his fifth birthday, he got the whole kit. Yep. So I'll put that up. Also, oh, you know what? I'll, I'll we'll show the the barley. You know the 
Carter on a scooter and with Jess on the but back. his new but his new kit um, looked absolutely amazing. That's actually Ella, my daughter, calling me right now to probably tell me how she's going for a first day. Oh, good. So that's cute, but I'll get that later. Um, now, have you taken Carter down to Arden Street yet? No, but we will go. I'll take him to his first AFL game this year, mm. and I don't know whether that'll be a kangaroo game or not. But I will probably be in a box. So don't. Wow. <laughs> well, when you've got privileged a young, upbringing. No, when you've got a young fella, it's just the first experience. I reckon the box is the right way to go. Yeah, not to be exposed to the elements. Well, you just because he he actually noise for some reason he doesn't like really loud noise. So I think you know, and the fact that you can just walk around and have your own space and that as well. I think that will be his first experience. But I'm glad that he chose that. Getting back to Taylor Swift. Yes. Did you go? Didn't go. Um, everyone wanted to go that I knew, but I just I failed to get um, the right tickets, meaning in a box. <laughs> uh, so so didn't uh, didn't venture there at all. But I, Pink is back in town. She is in Australia at the moment. Which and I've had mates, get, you know, all going to see her as well. And yep. I've I've actually been to a Pink concert, but it brought up a very funny. And I read the other day, and I know you in the you know all your gossip and 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 stuff, and you're well read on all of this. But I read that she got asked to leave. Well, not quite, but she had a booking for the Manly Skiff Club in Manly. It's basically an exclusive place, right on the water. Her and seven uh, friends from her, from her entourage had arrived. She had a booking, apparently prepaid. She's arrived at the front door. And said, yes, my name is Alicia, whatever it is. And she was reluctant to use her celebrity. And they said, do you have identification to prove who you are? She said, no. And they said, well, we're not letting you in. Is that fact? That is fact. Or is that just a rumour? That is fact. This has been all over well, I social want, media. And I want you to media. delve into this little story then. And I've told this is called The Truth Hurts. And I've, yes. I haven't told anyone this. Well, very few people. And I was, it was many, many years ago, and Pink was playing in the Gold Coast, at the Gold Coast. Yep. And she was staying at the Versace Hotel. And it so happened that, um, for whatever reason, well, as I've said on this show before, when I was on the run, and I was up in Queensland. <laughs> and you I might want on, to preface that. I was yes. on the run, and I was up in Queensland, and I, for what, some reason, I, I was staying at the Versace Hotel. Yep. And we happen to be on the same floor, which is one of the more exclusive floors. It's no longer called the Versace, by the way. It's called something else. But happened to have um, a room on the same level, which very few rooms on that level. Yep. So quite ex- for celebrities. Very, very res- So I was – no, not for celebrities. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I didn't hear that. But So I walked out onto the balcony this day and I had a little uh, friend with me named Ven. And Ven, um, and and a lot of people that know me know Ven, a little guy, a lovely guy, liked his music, travelled the world, uh, had a guitar with him all the time, and music was his life. He'd been to see Pink, I don't know how many times. He's been, you know, Van Halen was his favourite favourite band, which is yep. why he ended up renaming himself Ven. I didn't know that. Right, yeah. So... We were out in the balcony and he looked to the left. I, I was oblivious. He looked to the left and I, it was Pink and I think her partner, his name, Carrie, actually. Corey, I think. Carrie. Corey. It's it? Carrie, yeah. Okay. Spelled the same too, I believe. But he's got all excited and he's gone, oh, you know, what? He, he used to call me Rude Boy. Hey, Rude Boy. Like, he, he was a massive North supporter. We got to know one another. He knew Dennis Pagan and Arch and all the guys. Like, he'd go down to training and... Um, Anyway, he's got that excited about Pink and he's gone out, he's written this letter, sat down and wrote this full-on letter to Pink and gone and stuck it under their door. <laughs> and basically the letter said was, hey, hey, just letting you know, I'm here with, you know, rule boy. She's probably thinking, <laughs> what's, what's this guy on about? I'm here with rule boy. Um, come down and, and, and have a drink with us. Anyway, thought I've clearly had no response. Heard, thought nothing of it. Two or three days later, sitting back at uh, my house at the time, and reading the paper, and it said, and it said, P 
Pink left Versace because of a security breach. Really? Yeah. And I'm trying to work it out. Now, I don't know whether, <laughs> I don't know whether that security breach was Ven's – by the way, Ven's no longer with us. So right, if he's done anything wrong, you, nothing you can do about Can't it. Hold him but, accountable. Yeah, but he's no longer with us. Um, but he – yeah, I, I, I would love to know whether that was the security breach or Pink – had to leave the Versace, really? or, or she left the Versace hotel because of that security breach. Well, she may be listening to this now that she's in Australia. Well, yeah, look, I even doubt though it. we're worldwide, I mean, well, I the truth it. hurts would go. I think where is she at the moment? Oh. She in Melbourne? No, she well, she was in Melbourne the other day. I don't know where she is now. Well, she, she's not catching up with um, Travis Barker and Courtney Kardashian. <laughs> this. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit of footy. We're on the verge. Yes, we've got to talk about footy. We're on. We're we're nearly there. We're nearly there. It's been a long summer. Plenty happening. One of the th- one of the things that does does annoy me is, and spoken a lot about this over the years, is when a player becomes a free agent, how much better they become. Yes. You got anybody in mind? Cam Zerha, the North Melbourne forward. Yeah, straight straight to mind. Yep. Love the way he plays footy. Love his toughness. Got a bit of Glenn Archer about him. Yeah, he goes goes at the footy. Huge By steps. the way, not even. Not even close to Glenn Archer in terms of what he's done or what he has done. But he has, you know, that similar build, similar attack on the footy. He's uh, a big boy. Not as good as, not as good on the, the deck or the, uh, you know, the, the, the ferocious way that Arch went about the footy. It doesn't have that, but he certainly has Archer elements to him. Yep. So I love all of that about him. But he hasn't done anywhere near enough to be. Talked about the way he's been talked about. Well, there was a report the other day on Channel Nine in Melbourne that he had put off contract talks until the mid-year. Yeah. Well, well, maybe he's backing himself in, and if he has a really good first half of the year, then all of a sudden he's worth what he's worth. But I, it, it just annoys me that you know they spend all of this time and then they get built up like this, you know, super player. I don't know whether he's finished in the top ten in their BNF or not. I haven't even looked at that. I would assume not. Um, and at a club that has been on the bottom of the ladder and a player that's been talked about yep. as this unbelievable free agent, you know, I just think so, I think it's very premature and, and what it does is it gives these it gives them a false sense of worth, what they're really worth. And Cam Zerha should stay at North Melbourne and, and and fulfill what I think he could get to, but he's not there yet to be talked about as this like I said, unbelievable free agent. Uh, have you ever met him? Um, I think I've said, yeah, just in passing, not really. Yeah, well, we know not coaches really. use you to um, to educate some of their forwards, like Jesse Hogan in the past and Max King. So what would you say if you went out and had a beer with Cam Zerha on Saturday? No, I, well, I think that his he's, um, area to work on is to get more of the footy. Yep. That's... Quite simple. So it's just about getting to contests and um, work rate. I mean, I, you know, for me, just doesn't do enough consistently enough. Yeah. But well, what? It, but we he can do some unbelievable things. I mean, he has, you know, use another example, Jordan Degoe type sort of ability at times in and around the footy because he's got that bullish strength, yeah. but clearly not. In their conversations, yeah. Well, the good thing about Dugowie is he is becoming consistent. Oh, but he's he's uh, grand final was unbelievable, as was his prelim, and yep. um, you know he looks like he's in for a, another massive year. Who else? What else? What else have we got in the footy oh. world? Uh, Clayton Oliver, Melbourne. Well, yeah, I was just going to bring up Melbourne. They have had a shocking off season. Well, they've been in the news a lot. Yeah, that's for that's for sure. Clayton Oliver, I for love reasons they shouldn't love seeing him get back to where he got to only a couple of weeks ago. Yep, clearly not not in any position to be judgmental or also talk about what's going on in his private life. Because let's be honest, none of us actually really know. The only people that know are probably his physicians and himself. We hear even, a lot of things, even though. to a group. Yeah, we, we hear a lot of things, but most of them are bullshit. So we hear a lot of there's a lot of rumor and innuendo around Melbourne and it, and it continues to to flow. We've got you've, you know Joel Smith, the issue that, that he's really going through, you, didn't it? The the thing with Joel Smith is I reckon he's been thrown to the wolves. Yeah, I agree. 
I reckon he's been thrown to the wolves. If he was a if he was a really good if and no disrespect to Joel, but you know he's probably been a fringe player. He's had a few injuries, yep. um, and a few things you know not go his way. But if he was a really good player, this would be treated very differently from everyone. Yes, I, I just, from everyone, and I and I and I don't like the way the commentary around him has has been. You know, it, it's been really really poor. Yeah, and the allegations thrown against his name were shocking, literally shocking. And I'm not sure whether there's any validity to it, but how would you feel if those allegations were thrown against you and thinking, hang on, that's not me, that's not who I am, I'm a Melbourne Demon AFL player, and there's no truth to it, and it, it is shocking. It would be a lot to deal with. Well, everyone's talking, you know, like the details, the details, well, what do they say, the devil's in the details? Is that yes. a Yep. We don't know when when you read all of this stuff in the newspapers or hear it on the news. It, the details that you're given are, are swayed. Yeah. Oh, and, and it's not. And it, yeah, correct. So it's not. You're not. And that's why it's very hard to comment. But what I can comment on is is the talk in and around him. Yep. And the way and the support that he's been given, I think, has been piss poor. By the, by whom? I think by everyone. I think by Melbourne. I heard. I've heard a few players. I've heard Max Scorn, uh, you know, stick up for him and say that you know they can talk, but apparently they're not allowed to talk with one another. Certainly about yeah. footy or whatever. And I just really do think that if this was a player that you know had had more talent a a and a higher profile, I reckon there'd be way more done about this and there'd be more excuses made for him than what are being made for poor Joel Smith. So they've had an interesting summer. I think I think that uh, Melbourne are one of the teams to beat still. Really? To be honest, I do. Top four? They have the ability to finish top four. Yeah. Look, just to digress for only a second, Wayne, I think the Players Association's reaction to not only Joel Smith and by a little bit of an extension, Clayton Oliver and also Taron Thomas, I think, has been really average. I mean... These guys are, as Peter just said, union members. So the Players Association, yes, has to worry about what society says, but also come out in defence of the unionist, so their player, and say, we don't condone what X is alleged to have done, but he is one of us, and we will fight for him. They just, I don't think they do enough of it. No, I, I agree with that. I've always said that, that the Players Association needs to, the, the support in and around their players after they retire for a whole number of reasons has to has to improve a lot. Yep. And there can't be a blanket solution for one because there are players that are in the system a lot longer than others. And have different issues. Have have a lot of different issues. Now, sorry, just before you go on, Ducko, um, there was a bit of a rumour that was going around mid last week when everybody's phone was going hot about a good mate of yours. Also, coach of the demons. Did you hear that? No. Oh, we'll leave that alone then. No. What? What's? What's a rumor? Well, there was a rumor going around uh, amongst the AFL community that um, Goody was going to be sacked as coach of the Melbourne Footy Club. Oh, what a load! So this is what I mean about rumors. I mean, has it been I a coach? I don't know. Well, should we bring it up? Hasn't been a coach? No. Well, you probably shouldn't because you're just adding to the rumor. But I. Well, a lot of people. It's rang probably me. why I don't. I, I shut off to a lot of rumours, and 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 when things are, you know, forced down your neck, or you you do obviously hear some yeah. some of them, but you just you just can't you just can't delve into it. It's it it becomes it, it becomes a life within itself. It really does, and then people really start to believe it. And yeah. I've, there's been plenty plenty of rumours going around. I was also um, wanted to talk about the NRL and Vegas. Yes. At Allegiant Stadium. What could go wrong with sending what, a bunch of rugby league boys to <laughs> Vegas? <laughs> well, it's a favourite pastime of yours oh, to go to Vegas. Not anymore, it was. Um, how do you think that went? Um, look, to be honest, I thought the the prelude to the game was sensational. I think Fox Sports did a fantastic job. Can't fault them. Yep. Game I didn't see enough of playing on a compromised ground. Yeah, well, I saw playing the in Vegas. Mitchell. What yeah. was the what was the uh, what was the crowd like? Uh, I don't think it met expectations. How many viewers? Do we know that? Uh, I don't know whether the figures have been released. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, what the the entire exercise? 
Well, I don't, I don't know whether it becomes a whether it's a success or not. I, I do love the fact that they're branching out. But so I, I. I would, I when when I first heard about it, I thought, okay, so I'm in Vegas. Yes, I, I'm an Aussie, so I love. I'm brought up with rugby league. It's my it was my first love yes. as a football code. So love watching it. Parramatta supporter. Parramatta then, supporter. Then, then, then Canberra became I love Canberra because you know when they came into the comp, and then I love the Melbourne Storm because I you know got to meet a lot of them and we won the premiership in the same year and all of that sort of stuff. So yep. I I really love rugby league, but yeah. I'd, I, um, if I'm in Vegas, like I said, and I'm an Aussie and I love it, uh, and then, I don't know, Mariah Carey's singing down there and Adele's singing down there and <laughs> back once upon a time Elvis is singing down there and you've got David Copperfield making an elephant disappear down <laughs> yes, there. Yes, and then human nature across yeah, the road. And and yeah, whatever. Am I going to a rugby league game? Probably not. No, I wouldn't have thought so. Okay, put the shoe on the other foot. What if you were still playing for North Melbourne and they said... All right, boys, there's going to be four teams travel to Vegas. Yeah, I'd be there for all the other reasons. So oh, I'd go and watch all those shows that I was talking one. about. No, nah, well, you'd go there and, and play and play well and then you'd go to a, go to one of the shows. Go to a pool party. But, if, but, but, if, <laughs> but it has been marred. You know about this, don't you? Versace pool party. That's, that, was a, that was a good one. No, I never went to the pool parties, but apparently... Vene- sorry, not Versace, Venetian. Venetian. Venetian, Venetian. Um, now, Wayne, you know in the wake of... There was a racial allegation labelled against a Sydney City rooster from yesterday's game. And apparently, according to the Daily Telegraph, has descended into a bit of a dust-up in the hotel after the game. Oh, I don't believe that. Dust-up uh, could mean anything. Well, I'm only what, going someone, to read. Yeah, exactly. Someone said something or... Like, just don't read that crap. Mate, I've, I've, the amount of times someone has said that there's been a big blue and, and then you, you get to the, the nuts and bolts of it and... Nothing has even happened. Well, you talking about like um, the Broncos a few weeks ago. So anyway, are we saying that that's a success or not? The uh, NRL? I'm saying yes. You are? And you're saying? No, I'm saying good on them for having a go at it. I just think Vegas was an unusual place to have it because of everything else going on in Vegas. Yes. I just think there's more to do in Vegas than go to a rugby league game. Yeah, party. <laughs> correct. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is correct. And talk about um, partying. Went to the Chairman's Lounge at Flemington. Yep. What, recently? Recently, and was in there, had a table with the GBS, so just having a, having a good day. And tell me whether I should be upset about this or not, but you, you get it, by the way, gamble responsibly, and, and in saying that, we're going to announce that we have an affiliation with a, with a betting company. Fantastic. Which we, will, which we will talk about next week. Cannot wait. All right, so we'll talk about it. Um... At the chairman's, about to, you know, like I said, gamble responsibly, but going to put a bet on race two at, at Flemington. So not, I'm not betting in Sydney, not betting in, in Tassie or Adelaide or anywhere else. It was at Flemington, race two. And I've gone to put the bet on and there's this bloke in front of me. Now, it's on a day, so it's only a few weeks ago. So it's, Flemington's not busy, the chairman's is half full. And I know a lot, you know a lot, a lot, a lot of people in there. Big Michael Christian was in there. Is he still going to be working for the MRO? Um, Is he still going to be doing that? I'm not sure, actually. That's a tough job, by the way. But Very he's in there. So his brother is standing behind me. So there's now three of us in a line. Uh, the, the, the guy that was getting served, and then there was myself and Chris O's brother. Yep. So Did you know him? No, but I could tell, I could tell it was his brother because yeah. they look very similar. <laughs> so this guy has got his booklet out. He's putting $5 on every race at Flemington and other places. And he's and it's not about the amount of money that he was putting on, but he's going, I want this for a place, $5. And he's flipping, he's singing, he's got the, the, the page turned over, ear turned <laughs> over, and he's going, another $5 on this. And I'm looking, I'm looking up and I can see that the race is about to start, right? Yeah. And I just, and politely, as you do, I just went around and the lady that was sitting there and I said, Oh, excuse me, excuse me, sir. Do you mind if I've noticed you're putting a few bets on, but I want to put a bet on in, on this race? And he just said, "I oh, one more, right?" This guy goes, "I oh, one more," and she and and the lady said, "Yeah, yeah, no, he's entitled to do that." And I said, "But I want to put a bet," and and as did Chris O's brother. Guess what? 
they jump and you wouldn't believe it. It wins. Oh no. What did it pay? Eight bucks. You would have had on it? I no, it doesn't matter what I would have had on it. But I looked so I looked at I Chris legit, o? I looked at well we went over and had a whinge. I went over and had a whinge with Chris O and the brother, his brother. And then the whole day I just couldn't get over it. I I it, it stayed with me all day. They got to be better than that. If you're putting a well, bet on, well, shouldn't you have at least two cashiers? Well, if you're putting it, well, you would have thought, but like I said, it wasn't it wasn't busy. But you don't you can't allow someone to just stand up there and just continue to put bets on. Yeah. So anyway, so that's your bugbear. Let me day. know that that is my bugbear. Have you spoken to the chairman? Hey, I think is um, is Gil McLaughlin becoming the chairman, or is he for the opposition? I've club? got no idea. Oh, come on, Duck, you got to read the papers. No, I've got no idea. So b- big week. Do you agree on the footy being? This round zero rhubarb? Uh, yes, because I think some of the clashes are going to make for a sensational uh, round of footy. I mean, I watched a little bit of the um, of the games on the weekend, and which will lead us into our um, next topic of uh, Jimmy Webster being dimwit of the week. But I, I just I feel like the AFL should be shouldn't play um, practice games. They need to be all in or nothing. Like, play practice matches against themselves. I think it dilutes from the home and away series. Well, once upon a time, it used to be a big thing. Used to be. Yeah. But so, Antet Cup and, and yeah. uh, I don't know, what other... Virgin. There was, yeah, and a few different names. Foster's Cup back Foster's in really Cup, early days. When you were about 18. Yeah, well, and, and, and actually winning one of those night grand finals was a big thing for North Melbourne. Yeah, because you won. Well, because, yeah, because you won a good... The prize money was actually quite good and it was a really good lead into the season. But yeah. as you said, times have changed. Probably uh, you might have a very good point there. Um, yeah, on to the next one. Yeah. yeah North Melbourne captain. Yes, Jimmy, Sim- Yeah, Jimmy Webster. Yeah. Yesterday at Moravan. I just, you know, I, I, well, it's just a brain fade and it's, it's you know, and he had, he had plenty of time not to go through with that hit. Well, yeah, why didn't he tackle? Yeah, plenty of time. Well, it was late anyway, yeah. the kick, and he knew that he was going to get late but left the ground. Um, oh, just... Yeah, stupidity. A lot of talk about how much he should get. Well, one of your old teammates who's get. very vocal in the media is David King. Yep. He came out, I think, afterwards and said minimum 10 weeks. Yeah, now, 10 weeks is probably a bit harsh. But a bit harsh? Yeah. Now, I don't condone what Jimmy Webster did on Jai Simkin, but 10 weeks? Yeah, no, not 10 weeks. I agree. Like, it's how Pepper got four, and I think there was probably just as much intent. You know, he's going in, he, 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 he's going in to... To put pressure on yep. and strong physical pressure, and he's just got it terribly wrong. So it's not a, a it's not a dirty like King hit no. um, act that you know we've we've seen uh, at different times that are that those types of things are ten weeks. It is in a footy bumping motion, but the fact that he leaves the ground, he hits the head, he's in a lot of trouble. He get, it, it, I think you'll get at least six. I would be happy with five, but the other part being, I don't know how football conscious we are here in Melbourne, but Channel 9, I don't, you, you don't watch um, mainstream media anymore, they led their entire news bulletin last night at six o'clock with the bump. With the bump. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, well it was stupid. Uh, of course it's stupid, but Jimmy Webster will be public enemy number one until Thursday night, until the games are start. And I, I feel for him because I would like to think the Players Association or GBS or Beyond Blue would reach out and say, yes, the act wasn't great, but now we want to know how he's feeling. Yeah. Uh, yes, Josh Simpkin was publicly um, not well, but got up and stayed on the bench and was walking around coherent. How's um, Jimmy Webster feeling today? Yeah, well, he, sh- he should feel embarrassed and, you know, yeah, the, but- the fact that he's made a mistake and, and obviously Simpkin now misses a week and... Can't play yes. and it, or potentially longer, and it and it disrupts his start to the season because of an act that uh, went out with Abba. Well, Tony, it's been a big uh, first show. We've spoken a lot of rhubarb and about a lot of things that happen over the summer, but that's generally what uh, what you do. And we uh, we'll get into the tips next week, and we'll we'll give our tips on the footy. But I just want to say that next week there won't be our regular show, right? Okay. But we've got a guest. And it's a guest that is very controversial uh, in and around what's going on and the biggest topic in AFL footy at the moment, and we've touched on it today, and that is around concussion. I like it. So there's a lot to uh, 
digest in and around that. But I'm on an assignment next week. So we are really? we won't have this regular show, but we will put that interview, which I'm we'll be doing later uh, in the next couple of days. We'll put that interview up. What's the assignment? Hey? What's the assignment? Well, it's not the jungle. <laughs> So if it was the jungle, you'd expect to be in there. But I, now I'm away for the whole week, so we'll we'll do that the following week. So this show will be up in two weeks, but we will put something up next week. Can't wait. Which is an interview. So I look forward to chatting you chatting to you in a couple of weeks uh, in this environment, and um, have a uh, have a good week. Good luck on the assignment. <laughs>